listening to The Starting Zone, a podcast about World of Warcraft and the people who play it. And now, here are your hosts. Well, hello and welcome to The Starting Zone, the podcast about World of Warcraft and people who play it. Today is July 29th, 2024, and my name is Spencer Downey. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to the podcast. I'm joined today, as always, by my co-host, Jason Lucas. Jason, how are you doing on this fine Monday? Well, Spencer, hello. I'm doing quite well. And if it's July 29th, that means July is almost over somehow, which means it's almost time for War Within. Oh, and my goodness. Obviously, we had uh, we had pre-patch this week and mm-hmm. all of that, and that was a bit of a rocky road, and it continues to be. But <laughs> As expected. This is, this is why you know. they send the version patch out a month in advance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I... I am here. I am. I am excited, and I am really. You know what? As much as I've loved Dragonflight, I'm really just ready to stop playing it. Is kind of what I learned this week. Yeah, yeah I, I get you. I mean, I, same same sort of thing. Uh, I think uh, Blizzard's recognizing that too with both Dragonflight and Remix, because there's some undocumented hot fixes we have to talk about about Remix this week as well, where our players are are ready to move on and ready to get into the new stuff, and we've been anticipating it for a little while. So I think right now is uh is the right time to be trying to mix things up and this week we have the new event kicking off for the pre-patch so that'll give people something new to explore for a period of time which will be a lot of good time but before we dig too deeply into world of warcraft this past week and what's going on and what people have to look forward to next week there's a general thing that everyone might want to look forward to and that is that for like the first time that we've seen with Blizzard, they actually managed to form a union consisting of 500 employees who are going to be, I guess, seeking more secure jobs at this point. It's This is exciting. Yeah, I mean, how much did we talk about this, you know, a couple of years ago, back in 21, when the news of the lawsuit broke and then, you know, all, all of that, you know, the kind of like desperate uh, a labor organization struggle that they started and it, uh, you know that that ended up kind of being on hold because Activision Blizzard was sort of reunion busting and they really didn't want to play ball yep at that then shortly within a few months the Microsoft acquisition was announced which then took like a year and a half to complete and then um, you know Microsoft has you know publicly said as part of the acquisition and in in prior situations they were going to be hands off in terms of you know labor organizing and Then two weeks ago, we saw Bethesda form a wall-to-wall union. So like every department, 250 plus strong, I think. And, you know, Bethesda obviously has been a Microsoft company since 2020 or so. I think they announced they're going to buy it in 2020, close in 2021, something like that. And so now, yeah, now uh, small divisions of Blizzard have... Uh, voted to unionize, right? Like some key rate Raven already Um, had, and yeah, there was a few other mm -hmm. ones that had within that, yeah. Yeah, the Albany employees, I think, um, the Albany QA, for example. But this is the entire World of Warcraft team, specifically. So QA, art, sound, design, engineering, production. Uh, any, If you work on the World of Warcraft team, you are a part of uh, the World of Warcraft Game Makers Guild, is the name of the union, in conjunction with CWA, the Communication Workers of America. So this is huge. I mean, yeah, 500 plus employees. It, you know, un, under the Microsoft umbrella, Microsoft is obviously a company that drives tech and drives trends in tech. This is incredible, man. I'm I'm so happy for these employees. I know, like, from having sort of private conversations with with a few people over the years, it's something that a lot of people, uh, you know, in in that under that roof really wanted. And um, it's great to see that they that they're bringing it forward. Obviously, like they don't have a contract or anything yet. That's going to come later, but it's a it's an amazing first step and it's it's a huge it's really could be between this and bethesda this month there really could be a sea change in the industry you know and and a hell of a recruiting tool too i mean like a a union job working on on a game is just it, it could be a much more attractive proposition than you know working in without that protection and without that collective bargaining and everything so yeah I don't know. I was, you know, years ago when when we first started going down this road, I mean, we used to open almost every show talking about what was yep. what was new with Blizzard labor relations and all that. And we said, man, it'd be so great if they could do it. But it's just like the stars are not aligned in, in this climate. You know, I, I think the Microsoft acquisition was a thing that made the path become clear. And Microsoft has held true to their word. You know, I mean, obviously, they did layoffs. and They've done a lot of stuff that we don't like around here as customers and as people who care about the people that make the game. But um you know, just staying hands off and letting the employees do what they think is, is right for them and right for each other is awesome. 
congrats I, to him. I love to see it, and and I, I think it means good things for the future of the people that make the game. I'd go beyond just saying that this was the Microsoft acquisition. I would also say it's the Warcraft team laying out their plan for basically the next nine years of the game. They basically, at this point in time, are producing so much content for World of Warcraft that it has become its own very clear, sustainable business, right? And by having a, a, a path forward that's been mapped out for the next three expansions over the next six to nine years, whenever that happens, you really are putting yourselves in a situation where you go, you know what? We have a guaranteed project that these people will be working on for that period of time. I think we have a case for unionizing because like, it, it's not like, oh, well, you know what? We're going to shut down World of Warcraft in a month. Oops, right? They have actually have, have spent the money, spent the time, made the commitments to everyone, the fans, their you know stockholders, everyone, that this is their roadmap for the next long time. And so that I think this this is an easy layout for for building a union. So I, it, the star is definitely aligned, as you said, for things to come together. And I, I do feel like Microsoft probably opened the doors a bit wider than they were before to allow this to take place. And I'm really excited for all the staff and all the people out there who are now going to have that bargaining opportunity and and create more job security for themselves get better benefits packages potentially be able to get more consistent pay scale uh, for everyone who's involved in it negotiate those pay increases every year based off of what inflation's going on it's there's a lot of opportunities that can happen here so yeah i'm, I'm excited for them i'm glad it happened and we just wanted to take a moment top of the show to highlight that yeah it's it's wonderful to hear that the folks who make the games that we love are also taking care of themselves and getting taken care of, which is yeah, great. And each other. I, what yeah. I, the thing I love the, the most is that like QA is included with these other more design related departments, yeah. you know, I mean, there's always that ongoing sort of uh, discourse of, from people outside the industry about how QA isn't dev and all this. Yeah. And, you, you know, we, we've seen all of these examples of outsourced QA contract QA at many studios, every studio, being treated like garbage compared to some of the other labor. So, you know, having QA be at the table with the, you know, the artists and the game designers and engineering is incredible. It's just, it's such yeah. a great achievement for them. And yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, it could have been possible under the old Activision Blizzard ownership and leadership, but it really would have been a tooth and nail fight. And um, because that corporate management was obviously antagonistic to this happening, they didn't want it for sure. And yeah. so, yeah, with, with Microsoft staying true to their word and saying, you know what, we're, we'll leave it to you. Uh, it's fantastic. So congrats, yeah. Team 2. Uh, we're, we're really happy for you. Yeah, it's not just Team 2. It's everyone who works on it, which is wonderful. So, yeah. Well, Team like, 2 is the Warcraft team. Yeah. They are the Warcraft team. Yes, sure. Yes. Uh, it, it, but if as, as that expands, as we see potentially more projects come on within the Warcraft universe, we could see that potentially expand, which is exciting. So, Well, it would be cool to see yeah. if other uh, teams within the studio follow suit. You yeah, know, I think that's possible. probably the next shoe to drop is like, you know, the Overwatch team, the Hearthstone team, these other teams may be going in that direction as well and just yeah. having like the, the whole shop. That would be incredible. And again, like Microsoft is a, is, a, is a leader in this industry. And so, you know, that kind of sets a trend. And if employees at Microsoft are doing it, then who else is going to start doing it? Yeah, it's true. And yeah, outside of Blizzard, potentially other other studios under the Microsoft brand might also uh, follow suit as well. All right. So before we dive into what's going on this week, is there anything you want to highlight about this past week for you with Jason before we dive? Into yeah, a little stuff? bit. I, I did play some WoW, believe it or not. Um, I, I I did hop in Tuesday night. Servers came up right around midnight my time. Uh, but I was I was sitting around waiting to see what was going to happen. And I wanted to hop in. So I did. I, I you know, I was tooling around a little bit. I think I did, did like a black wing layer for some transmog or something, but you know, I wasn't, we weren't pushing raid from seven 30 to midnight. So t Tuesday was basically a wash in NA Wednesday. We did get in. We had some people show up to play actually a pretty healthy crew. We did heroic Abris and mythic first three. Uh, that was, we could have done anything, but Abris, it was Abris's turn. And that it's and everybody's like, please let's not do vault this week. And I said, okay. Um, the raid is tuned like paper. We, I mean, we killed every single boss 30 seconds faster than our fastest. So that felt great. That's exactly what it should be like. It shouldn't be harder. You know, in this, this content is deader than a doornail. Like it's all over. So just tearing through that stuff felt really great. I did one key, try to plus 10 Neltharis, which felt about like a plus seven. I was doing stuff in the Fort Neltharis that I would have felt a lot differently about a couple of weeks ago <laughs> in terms of how much I was grabbing and rounding up. But the tuning feels very favorable. Um, actually, one of the guys that we were running with, he's 
a regular member of our crew, but for some reason he didn't have his Neltharis teleport. So that was nice to get that done for him here under the wire. I've seen a bunch of people getting various uh, rating related achievements and stuff. Now is the time to do it for sure. The stuff is very favorable. So if you were like, uh, I want to get Keystone Master, but I don't know if I can, or I want to get Keystone Hero, but I don't know if I can, I want to get my tens. You can probably do it now. It, the, the tuning feels pretty good. I mentioned the the dual class raid we have coming up and how I needed to be working on my Demon Hunter. So I've been doing that. I got up to 492, did, did all the weekly stuff because now all the weekly stuff gives 480s and then you get the 493 at the end of the week. So nice. Like all of those outdoor events give 480s. So I, I filled in pretty much all the gaps, got some more stuff from Bullion. So I think she's good to go. Normal only drops 493, right? So at 492, I think she's good. Yep. And then the other thing I got into was I was leveling up my troll warrior a bit. He got stranded after BFA and he was sitting around at level 50. I got into 53 just from doing the heirloom quest a couple weeks ago. I think I mentioned it's super ridiculously fast. Like I was barely even paying attention to what I was doing. I decided to go out to um, burning crusade because that's like my favorite leveling zones because the quest density is just obscene. Yep. And I got to level 61 without even paying attention to what I was doing. Really just eight levels in the blink of an eye. And the one thing I really want to point out is that, you know, they had that blurb about how they were upping quest reward gear, like they're going to make gear from quest rewards better. Uh, they really undersold that. It's it's ridiculous how much better it is than it used to be. Uh, you know, I, I had the troll set up in heirlooms because I my gear was all over the place. Right. And they've squished item levels a couple times or yeah. some, uh, you yeah. know, I don't know. I'm in like level item level 70 stuff at yeah. level, you know, what used to be max level or something like, OK, I didn't do the gear update. That was my fault. If you're like two expansions out of date, you should definitely do the gear update. hundred percent. Um, you should. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like I figured that out after the first couple, I said, I don't want to do that. And I was like, uh, item level 70 doesn't seem right. But so, you know, I had heirlooms on, which is, you still get some bonuses from it. You get the, your rested decays slower and everything, but I'm turning quests in and I'm getting items that are 35 item levels higher than the heirlooms I'm wearing. Yeah. And like no amount of rested is worth that to me. So yeah. I, you know, I, that's cool. It's, I think heirlooms are in a weird spot. They probably need a little bit of a, even if you're going to have a small item level penalty because they have these other bonuses, fine. But 35 item levels is a little outrageous. Like, how can you say no to that upgrade, you know? But the cool thing is if you just want to level up and you don't, if you never, if you don't have any, it's a very level playing field for those without heirlooms, right? You just get so much power from these quest rewards. So that felt great. I think I'm going to probably just chill tonight and then, Maybe I'll see how it feels leveling with the event that's going on that starts up tomorrow on yeah, that character and yeah. get him to 70 that way. Just to see, you know, to see what it's like, because um, you can participate above level 10 for that. So, yeah, I don't know. Every, everything I've heard from everybody seems pretty thrilled with the state of leveling. It's super fast, smooth, just like we thought it would be and does apply to remix. So remix is just like a fast forward button if you want to level up a fresh tune at this point. Right. Yeah, no, I, I definitely feel like the changes that are coming in to also boosting character goes along the same lines of them trying to get everyone's item level to a point that it makes sense for their characters to feel good when they're playing them. Heirlooms do sound like they're a bit undertuned if you're getting upgrades that large between them. Heirlooms should be something that you, you know, set and forget on your character when you're leveling. That was kind of the concept and purpose behind them. I don't think you should be swapping back and forth between quest gear and heirlooms regularly because the reason why you the heirlooms were put into the game was for that set and forget leveling an alt kind of character situation. So sounds like they need a bit of a tweak just to get them back into the right spot. But good overall. Uh, that's a, a chunky b- bunch of stuff you got done last week, which is nice to hear. Let's hop into what's going on this week in World of Warcraft. All right, this week is Dragonflight Dungeon Event, meaning the final boss of each Dragonflight Dungeon drops an extra piece of loot. And if you complete four dungeons on Mythic Difficulty, you will get two Boolean, which is pretty exciting for folks who actually want to collect a transmog piece that they want before the expansion launches, because the Radiant Echoes event will be going live tomorrow. uh, And that event will be a great way to not only level up characters, we hope, but also just gear characters. The, The biggest thing for these events is they tend to just prep everyone's character for moving into the leveling phase of the next expansion, which means gearing those characters is going to be a really nice thing that you can do through this. Typically there is bind on account gear. This time I believe it's war war bound on equip gear is what's going to be, uh, what's going to be dropping out of the radiant echoes gear. And then you'll be able to just 
mail it around all your alts or put it inside your war bank and put it on all your alts and you'll be able to have everyone sort of geared up and ready to go for that stuff now hopefully hopefully we can put it in the bank i I know i was gonna say (laughs) now i did just say the word war bank which is a triggering factor for some people because there is currently disabled and it's not a thing so hopefully tomorrow when this goes live we have our war banks back as well for folks who uh (laughs) who don't have access to that because that's the thing all right, uh, the last hurrah this week, you get to just pick one. Last week, this wasn't working. Last week, you you picked whatever you wanted, but got the same thing every time. So it didn't matter which one you picked. Hopefully that quest is also resolved tomorrow because uh, it'd be nice to be able to pick whether you want to do the Dragon's Isles, or Relic Caverns, or Emerald Dream hurrahs for the week, which one you want to do. All of the world bosses are currently awakened as well, and all of the raids are currently awakened. So it is, it is awakened time at the moment. So if you're mm-hmm. someone who's diving into that content... You'll be getting, obviously, the better rewards, but the more challenging content. World bosses are great to knock out for people who want to get a little bit extra eye level. However, I would say all of that stuff, unless there's transmog or, like, a particular achievement you're working for, set it aside until you see what the Radiant Echoes stuff is and where you want to be character-wise. Because Radiant Echoes event is probably going to be the easiest way to acquire character power this week and next week up leading up towards the actual expansion release. So just try that first and be like, oh, this is actually better than killing the world boss. <laughs> that could be the case. So just be aware of that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. A couple of notes on that. Like, so the world boss has dropped 499, but it's a real crapshoot. I think I've gotten one piece of world awakened world boss loot this entire season, killing it at least once a week on a tune, if not several more times. Yeah. Um, so it is, it, it's better baseline, but it's way less of a sure thing. The Radiant Echoes event is going to drop 480 baseline stuff that you can then upgrade. Um, 480, I think, will probably be perfectly fine to get you started in War Within if that's all you want to get to. Um, So just keep that in mind. I mean, if you're just tooling around on a character and you want to go do that, it's definitely an option. Um, Everything being awakened also means all of the 50% rep buffs are active. And now we have, of course, you know, the the War war Band uh, Renown rep. So... You can just pop all your tokens, get your rep, get your Paragon bags, whatever, as underwhelming as they may be. You can still get them. One thing I want to point out here that I love that they they added last week to the last hurrah is it will now award your weekly bullion. So if you go do your, you know, community feast and a hunt and a siege on Dragonbane keep, you get caught up on your bullion for the week if you're if you're one or two weeks out, right? I did it on my warrior on Tuesday on Wednesday. And I got two bullion because we didn't get the one from the prior week because we it, there was the bug or whatever issue with it. This is incredible because I really have no appetite for LFR at this point. So like I took my Demon Hunter out and did this and I took my Paladin out and did this just half an hour maybe of doing outdoor stuff, maybe a little bit longer. And there you go. Two bullion, go get a weapon. You know, it feels great. So that, that's an awesome addition. I would much rather be doing that at, at this particular point in time in, in in the expansion's life, with the with my mindset, I would much rather just do a last hurrah on a tune and get my bullion versus queuing up for LFR, waiting in there, and then who knows what's going to happen once it starts up, you know? So that's that's an option. You can get bullion without doing any raid content at all, which is pretty awesome. So it is super fast to get a character up to like four four eighty ish gear right now because you can do. Community Feast, Grand Hunt, Dragon Bane Keep, Researchers Under Fire, uh, Suffusion Camp, Time Rift, uh, Dream Surge, Super Bloom, and Dream Seeds, and all that stuff gives 480 caches. So, you know, before it was like three of those a week will give you 480 caches. So you could, you could do that, but that is going to be r- roughly equivalent to the Radiant Echoes gear, and there's new Mog from the Radiant Echoes and all that. So, if you know, just keep all that in mind. If you have a whole bunch of stuff that you want to do, all, all this is relatively equivalent in power. So yeah, yeah. it's a, like if, if you're just jumping in and you're, you're hungry, you know, and you need wow stuff to do, like all this stuff is great to get a tune prepped and you can decide however you want. The thing with Radiant Echoes is like there is new cool stuff that you want from it and you're going to want to be doing it's it. It's limited so. time. Yeah, it's limited time yeah. stuff. The, the other thing I'll factor in is the amount of people who are around. It's a lot easier to do the events you listed off that exist inside Dragonflight when there's a bunch of people around. There probably won't be as many people around doing those events because they'll all be doing <laughs> yeah, Radiant they're, Echoes. They're all going to be doing Radiant so Echoes, yeah. It's, it's that argument of, all right, it, is it worth the time investment to do this? And like I said, if you're going for a particular reputation or a particular achievement or something along those lines, sure, by all means, head out there, do them. They they give you that 480 gear. 
But if your objective is, hey, I want to gear up and what's the best way to do that? Just hit the Radiant Echoes event. It's where everyone's going to be. That's where the party's at. That's where you're going to get equivalent gear to doing all of these other things that you're doing. And it's upgradable, which means, hey, if you're enjoying it and you want to, you know, have a grind for yourself, you can grind to upgrade it, which is pretty awesome for folks too. So keep that in mind. All right. The PvP Brawl for the week is Deep Six. That means that uh, teams of six go against each other inside Warsong Gulch, Silver Shard Mines, and Temple of Cot Magoo. Each battleground offers a little variation on traditional format, like the flags are a bit closer in Warsong Gulch. There's less carts to keep track of inside of Silver Shard Mines. And there's only two orbs inside of Temple of Cot Magoo. So if you want a little bit more of a tight-knit group getting in there and doing some, some brawling in these battlegrounds, you can do that this week as well, if that's something you want to hop into. Mythic Plus affixes for the week are Tyrannical, Volcanic, and Sanguine. That means bosses have 30% more health, and of course they deal increased damage. And while in combat, enemies practically cause gouts of flame to erupt beneath the feet of distant players. And when slain, non-boss enemies leave behind a pool of lingering ichor. And this uh, ichor will heal their allies and damage players if they stand in it. I am like, keep. I have to keep checking myself to go... Do we still have these affixes? When's the new stuff come in? Do we still have the <laughs> season one? We ought to wait till season one, guys. <laughs> it's been a little while. In the soft season time, we still have tyrannical, volcanic, sanguine. We still have those rotation of the old affixes that will not be going away. And that new dungeon pool that won't change until we hit season one of War Within. So that's what we're looking like for this week. Overall, this is a, a good tyrannical week. You're not going to be dealing with sanguine at all during tyrannical bosses. Volcanic is a minor inconvenience most of the time. There's only a few bosses where you have to group up where it might be a factor. There are still some things that you can actually accomplish right now as far as Mythic, uh, Mythic Plus Keystone rewards go. I, I think you still get your teleports. You can still get, get Keystone Master and those achievements if that's something you're trying to do. So this is a good time for actually, you know, trying to get those things knocked out before the end of expansion. Maybe you're just coming back to the game, getting ready for, you know, heading into War Within, and you're like, you know what, I'm going to hit the Radiant Echoes event, get a bunch of 480 gear, go and hit some Mythic Plus, and actually, you know, grind out some of these achievements. That's a viable thing to do over the next couple of weeks, so keep that in mind with these affixes. Yeah, I mean, this seems like a pretty good combo. Uh, considering the way Fort fell, I, I feel like it'll feel fine. Uh, the tuning was really favorable, and Volcanic Sanguine is an easy combo in in a vacuum, right? I mean, yeah, tyrannical. The bosses scale up, but I mean, yeah, sang sanguine, like you mentioned, is not a factor. Volcanic will happen, but it's not super disruptive compared to what most of the bosses are already doing anyway. Like, yeah, you do have to move once in a while if you have a distant target, uh, but you know, it's not. It's not like an insta death if you handle it wrong or whatever. It could knock you into something you don't want to get knocked into, and then you have sort of this cascading, uh, you know, problem. But overall, it's you know, the counterplay is just see the volcanic move out of the way and you know proceed with the fight and yeah I, you know so you have you have the bosses are way healthier and they do more damage but considering the way fort bosses felt last week i think even buffing those up is going to feel pretty fine for most groups so yeah that's awesome keystone hero keystone master is still available and plus 10 teleports are still available like you mentioned so yeah if you if you want to get that stuff, like we we do still have a couple weeks here, you know. I guess you have through the twenty second or no, it? 20, I mean, the twenty second is when early access, early access starts. starts I, th I think you still have till the next week. I think it's still the twenty sixth yeah. or whatever you have till yeah twenty fourth. Yeah, 24th? so the twenty sixth. So yeah, so, so yeah, the twenty yeah the, that week in that week. in yes. with with maintenance. Well, it's a worldwide launch, so yeah. I, I don't know. You it's have 26th. this week, yeah. next week, one more week for sure, yeah. and then you know to get and then you'll have some extra time so if you still have stuff to get done you, there's plenty of time to do it it's just it's weird right now because this content is just it's so lame duck right everybody's just kind of mentally moved on but mm -hmm. um it's super approachable like it, everything the, the tuning is i would say everything feels 20 to 30 percent easier than it felt last week so as it should that's a yeah, yeah right i mean sometimes we have had times before where a pre-patch would come in and stuff just gets sideways and everything yep. feels worse there are specs that definitely got hit and and are desperately awaiting their hero talents, but overall, like the the content difficulty tuning feels really good. So, if you still have unfinished business in Mythic Plus, get in there this week. It's a great tyrannical week to do it. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, speaking of you know classes that got hit, I will say that there was some hot fixes that went in for Beastmaster and Survival Hunters. 
as well as a fix for destruction warlocks where decimation can now only trigger uh, from critical strikes dealt by you your direct damage abilities um, so keep that in mind so I, I expect there to be more hot fixes on classes than just these these three adjustments but I feel like those are going to happen in three or four weeks time. I think there might be one more adjustment yeah. in two weeks and then there'll probably be no adjustments for two weeks and there'll be a bunch of adjustments again. That's my guess. But we'll right. I mean, what, they're not really, happening. they're not really dialing the tuning in for this period, right? They're yeah. not tuning level 70 classes, but right. I can tell you Beastmaster was way off the charts last week. Mm. <laughs> like one of the, one of the people we've run with who kind of switches around, but it's been sticking with BM uh, quite a bit this season was just blasting away. And uh, I mean, they're a good player and usually up at the top, but everybody was, you know, like, Oh, look at this guy. You lower. Know? Yeah. Well, I mean, just like, yeah, it's just, just completely blasting the meters apart. So we, we kind of figured after Wednesday that some, some BM tuning was going to happen. It's, it's like a bit weird to, to nerf stuff in this window to nerf classes, but um, oh, and there's an obvious outlier. You know, yeah, yeah, when, yeah, when it's that it. much of an outlier, yeah, yeah, you just have to. And, and normally, I would say just bring everybody else up, but they got they got bigger fish to fry right now with tuning. Like they're not even concerned about Dragonflight and level seventy tuning. So, yeah, if something's off the charts, that it, it, it's going to get dialed back. In the yeah. case of Beast Mastery, so it stinks. It was fun while it lasted. It was a fun night just watching everything explode before the Beast Master. But yeah, they you know they they rolled it back a little. Now, a, a change came in, but I almost want to call it a fix for player characters, which is using a character boost, race change, or faction change no longer disqualifies the character from doing heritage armor quests, which means if you're someone who started out as a troll and you're like, ooh, I want to join my friends over on Alliance, I'm going to join this other guild as a night elf, you can now do the night elf heritage armor quest. That's a thing. You could have done the troll one while you were a troll and then actually do a race change and faction change over to be in a night elf on Alliance side and go and do the heritage armor quest for night elves. That's now a thing. I am very happy with this. There's no longer like some sort of imposter situation taking place of like, no, you can't do the heritage armor quest because you were a troll before. Like that's what? No, my character's entire identity has now changed. Yeah. Please allow me to do the thing with the, the changed identity. So yeah, that's good. I'm glad that's in. It's a uh, good This is fix. amazing. Yeah. I mean, this is a huge, this is, I, like the fact that this is just sort of, a line in a hotfix blog kind of yeah. blew me away because this is a philosophy shift for the way that heritage yep. armor has largely worked since it came in in 2018. I think it's great. I, I think, you know, allied races and the heritage armor restrictions absolutely had their place in that kind of sunset period of Legion because it was a cool thing to do. Here's a character that not everybody else can have access to. Oh, look, look at this prestige thing that you have. Oh, and look, if you level them up, you get this cool look that only people who do this can have. Like mm -hmm. it, it added some really cool prestige cosmetics to the game in that window. But since then, it really hasn't served much of a purpose, in my opinion, uh, especially since leveling has been so trivialized, especially this year between Remix and, and now the um, XP uh, requirement reductions. Like leveling is not that big of a deal. So it's not like a reward for the reaching the end of some great journey or anything, right? It's it's just I don't think this really serves its purpose anymore. So if you if you were in that situation or whatever, if you have a character that had been race changed or faction changed or something and you were locked out of doing your heritage armor on that character, go back and check because you could probably do it now. It's cool with the character boost too, because I got I, I get end up just having boosts pile up yeah, on my account I as I get them around. from the special editions <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's awesome. I don't have any heritage armors to obtain right now, but you know, maybe maybe someday. Um, but yeah, it, it's uh, uh that this was I I can't believe this wasn't like publicized more or like even a uh, I don't know like like in the pre patch notes or like a highlighted feature for pre patch or something. It's just like yeah, here's this hot fix a couple of days later. Yep. Yeah, go get your heritage armor. Yeah, yeah. It was that. I mean, to me, this is a huge shift from the way this has been, and the fact that it's just like one line in a hot fix blog is kind of funny. It is pretty funny to me. There wasn't actually just a, a dedicated blog post to this change coming in. I I agree with you there. Uh, all right, <laughs> undocumented changes. Blizzard is delivering on their promise early on for Remix that, hey, by the end of Remix, players will be able to solo mythic raids and heroic raids on their characters. I guess they're feeling like not enough people kind of hit that mark. So, 
Heroic, Mogushan Vaults, Heart of Fear, Terrace of Endless Spring, Throne of Thunder, Siege of Ogremar, and Mythic Siege of Ogremar have all had their health and damage reduced by over 50%, all of the things inside of them. So they are now 50% easier, all of the raids I just listed. So folks who are like, hey, I want to get in there and solo this content, or I want to do this content with two or three friends, you probably can now if you've been engaged in Remix for, you know, at least slightly part of the duration of all of this. It also means those who are like diving back into the live game and going, hey, I kind of want to level a character for playing War Within. You can now level that character through the Remix situation quite quickly. And you can then head yourself into doing some of this heroic content if that's something you want to do and check all that out and get yourself some currency before it all wraps up in a few weeks. So certainly worthwhile checking out some Remix if that's something you're wanting to do with your time because these raids are substantially easier than they previously were. Yeah, we don't have like official blue text on the adjustments and maybe there are some other adjustments that uh, yeah, didn't get be. data mined or whatever. But I did talk to, I haven't played Remix in a couple of weeks now since I've been done with it. But I did talk to somebody who is trying to literally like stat and bronze cap uh, everything in addition to having all the rest of it. I don't know why he's doing this, but this is what he's doing. And he said he did it and it did feel a lot faster. He was already soloing the raids anyway. But um, yeah, I mean, the 55% health reduction on bosses that in a lot of cases with a full group were dying in like 15 seconds. You know, it's this is great uh, because for one thing the population in remix is just decreasing. Yep. You know, the, the people who got in there and got into end game quick, they got what they wanted out of the experience and got out. So you're going to have fewer people rounding out those groups. And so if you make more content soluble or approachable with a small group, then that's a lot better. Um, yep. I think, you know, I'm still expecting like some kind of last minute, like all right, it's the last week or two weeks of remix or something. And they're going to throw out some, crazy buffs to like bronze acquisition or threads or something so have to keep an eye out for that and uh, maybe we'll get a blog tonight with the actual you know the full list of changes but this is awesome i felt i felt like remix was getting a little stale we hadn't seen any big changes in a few weeks and you know it is a limited time mode so people get in and get out and i yeah i think this was probably a good change uh you know you if you if you hadn't been racking up all those threads then you may not get to a point where you can solo the raids if that was your goal yep. or whatever. So whatever. I, I don't think anybody is like, oh, th this is this isn't the way it should be. These are supposed to be harder. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's, yeah, I don't think anyone is. Yeah, with remix. It's remix. Yeah. Uh, if anything, it's just relief for the I'm sure shrinking population. Agreed entirely. All right. Those of us who end up beta testing patch day, as all of the EU folks like to phrase it. Uh, are all receiving an additional day of game time coming in sometime on or before August 15th. Basically, all the North American, Latin American, Australian, and New Zealand accounts, which were active as of July 23rd, 2024, are getting one day of actual game time added to their account because of the extended maintenance and downtime that took place for the War Within uh, initial pre-patch that went live last week. So, you know, as, as far as we go, they're giving us the day back, everybody. It's all those people who are like, maintenance took too long. You should give us game time. They're doing it. It's happening. Here you go. Here's day. It's great. I mean, this is the first time they've done this, I want to say, since Warlords of Draenor launch. a long launch. time, yeah. I could, I could be wrong, but Warlords of Draenor launch is the last time I remember them granting sub time because of server downtime. Yeah. And I got to wonder if this is also a post-Activision Blizzard kind of thing. like. Because they would have had opportunities to do it at some point between 2014 and 2024 when there was extended downtime or whatever. Yeah. But I, I, I did, it did occur to me, like, man, it's been a really long time since the last time they did this. And it's just it's a goodwill gesture to the community. I don't think anybody is really going to seriously gripe about, you know, one thirtieth of or 31st of, of fifteen dollars or whatever the sub is in your region. And, you know, downtime is uh, assured you like you know what's going to happen with this game especially when there's patch maintenance but for them to just do it as, a, as a, a gesture of goodwill and say hey you know sorry for the disruption here's an extra day of sub time it's the right thing to do it just makes you feel good as a customer and which is probably also why activision blizzard was like stop doing that <laughs> right? like i could i could totally get why the old management would be like do not do that and the new management is a, a little more willing to to build up some some trust with players so 
I mean, whatever. I I, I have a recurring sub for twelve months, and I, I don't think my subs up to like next summer or something. But I'll take an extra day. Why not? Yeah, just just push that bill back one more day. That's great, indeed. All right. As far as the level sixty boost goes, we actually got an, an update here about this that I mentioned earlier in the show, where the level sixty boost now provides item level three twenty seven gear up from one eighty, and that's going to go into effect. Uh, once patch 11.0 goes live. So basically, I hope you didn't boost a character a couple weeks ago because that would have sucked because <laughs> you, you just you just missed out on some free gear because that's what's coming in uh, as, as we sort of hit this 11.0 patch. So yeah, definitely. there was no uh, what uh, no like advanced notice of this. It yeah. was just like, well, that's not entirely true, but the advanced notice was very shortly before the patch went up. It was like yeah. the, pr- the prior day. So, yeah, if you got in and, and bo- oh, I'm going to buy the expansion, I get a boost. I'm going to use the boost. And then, yeah, you know, you might have lost out on some on some. I mean, that was a, a giant change to the item level that you get yes. from using that, yeah. like kind of eye popping. But, you know, at, at this point, if you're looking at having a tune like war within ready for for day one really like 480 is what you're looking at so you're talking about and and like i said earlier too like the quest rewards got so much better with patch like if you missed out on it's not the end of the world it doesn't mean the tune's like dead in the water but you have to do a little bit more work to get up there and and get your stuff out of uh you, you know the event that's coming in this week and everything like that yeah exactly okay as far as the visions of azeroth quest chain goes we actually got a post from nathera who i have not heard from in a while and i'm just Nith- happy to I see had the to name put it in. nathera posted had to go in the I know, notes I, just, I mean yeah we we love nathera she's yep. she's like og uh a community manager and and in wow publishing and she used to do a wow podcast for blizzard many years ago they used to do blizzcast and yep. she was one of the people that ran that and uh, you know I don't know if we, I would be here talking to you right now if it wasn't for for Nathera doing Blizzcast back then. It's pretty incredible to to see the name every now and then. It just it's great memories. Anyways, uh, if you, they basically Nathera says if you've completed the Harbinger quest chain, then your quest should trigger for the Visions of Azeroth quest chain. But you can take part in the pre expansion event at any state at level ten and above. So if you have a new character, you're just starting out. You can hop into that pre-expansion event. You can start doing all the leveling through that and just sort of gearing up and experiencing that event at any any stage of the quest chain. But if you want to do the Visions of Azeroth sort of lead into War Within, you have to have completed the Harbinger quest chain that came out this past week. So just be sure you take advantage of that first before you start diving into the Visions of Azeroth. Or if you're like, why didn't this quest trigger? You probably haven't done the previous one yet. So be sure you get that done. Okay, I mentioned Warbanks were disabled earlier on, and I want to highlight this. So along with the launch of Free Patch 11.0, they've temporarily disabled the Warband Warbank while they work on a critical issue. This is their top priority, and they're hoping to enable it as soon as possible. This is Kyvax. Since we highlighted Nathera, I have to highlight Kyvax too. Kyvax is a great, great dude too. So I'm glad that Kyvax is out here making all the posts for everyone today. The majority of the ones that we talked about today come out from Kyvax, so... Thank you for that. But yes, the uh, in, in generally speaking, we have not gotten an update on this yet, but hopefully tomorrow we see the war banks get fixed and that all kicks in yeah. and everything's good to go. I mean, this was this came out uh, Tuesday night. So this was like once the servers came up and yeah, there's just been no f- further communication that I could yeah. find. Uh, it's kind of a disaster. I mean, it's not that big <laughs> of a deal because we didn't have it. It'd be one thing if it was something we're used to having and we got it taken away, right? Yeah. It's a new thing that we don't have yet, so it's a little bit less bad. But it was like one of the big features it for was. this past week. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm I wasn't surprised that maintenance was extended until midnight Eastern. I wasn't surprised that war banks were a mess because with anything like that, anything brand new, I just kind of assume. Um, you know, I've also heard of people experiencing bugs where like their characters are missing, like deleted or just like not available from the character select screen. That luckily that didn't happen to me, or at least not on any characters that I care about playing at the moment. But that's like a way bigger deal than not having access to the war bank yet. Um, you know, this patch was kind of gnarly, and there's there's still some jank like when you log into a character and then it it like switches to the character creation screen and then switches to the server you're logging into. That's always a little jarring. Um, you know, they changed a lot about the, the underlying game data with this patch. So, yeah, yeah, I'm I, I'm not surprised to see it. I, I it's just what do I always say? Buy buy the ticket and take the ride. Right. I, I remember 
not being able to log into the game for hours on end back in 2004, looting a mob and then being stuck crouching for the rest of my play session. Um, it's always been the way this game is when it, when there's a big release and stuff just isn't going to work and you can decide what that means for you as a customer and a player. Um, I try to just take it in stride. It's going to work at some point. They'll make it right eventually, but it, yeah, kind of a bummer that like, uh, here's your, your big headline feature. This is one of the big things you get to play with this week. Here's a quest line. that gives you a toy that gives you mobile access to it. And then it's just broken for a whole week so far. I mean, almost, I guess we're at six days, five and a half days. It's been broken, but you know, we'll see. I'm, I'm sure we'll have long maintenance in, in NA tomorrow and maybe they'll get some of this stuff start, you know, start to get it cleaned up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, talent trees. Kavax comes in and says, hello, we just want to clarify that we implemented the class trees for this patch as intended. And this is not a bug. The current war within pre-patch includes our initial class and spec changes as you can see in the beta, there are much more changes coming, changes that we're adding with the full War Within expansion. Between now and then, we may deploy urgent tuning and bug hotfixes like we saw with Beast Mastery, but the talent trees in the live game are working correctly. So just making sure everyone understood that the reason why their talents may have gotten reset or things might have gotten changed or whatnot wasn't a bug, it was intended, it was part of the plan. So everything's going according to the plan currently. So keep that <laughs> in least, mind. As far as they want us to know. Anyway. Yeah, it's, it's fair. Um, that's, that's what they're presenting. That's what they're presenting. Right. Fair enough. That's the official story. Yeah. Um, I think I, uh, I think it was Rhett Paladin was specifically one of the ones that people went, hey, this isn't the beta trees. Like, is this bugged? And, you know, I, I think it's reasonable as a player who's following the development to assume like, OK, this is what's on beta. So like when the patch comes in pre patch, I'll have this set of trees. Um, and it may have even been on PTR like that. I, don't, I, I have done not enough testing to speak about this confidently but um i think the thing was players figured they would have the new trees for some of these specs they have the existing dragonflight trees and i'm going to assume that it has something to do with the way it, it ties into hero talents and that they don't want to push the tree changes until the hero talents are out that would be that that would be my intuition just be, because otherwise why not just push all the new stuff out to all the specs yeah you know we are we are in this weird in between space it's not dragonflight anymore but it's not war within yet and so yep. we don't we don't have all the stuff that we need for the classes to actually work right and if this was some kind of stopgap, like a decision that they made because well if we ship this without the hero talents then it's really not going to work right or it's not going to feel good or there's some tech issue or something well then that's what you get but it's only a couple more weeks we got a post here from a developer uh on wow called drow about the uh, the actual warbound heirlooms, what they were doing. So they say, thanks for your feedback on heirlooms. We originally planned to convert heirlooms to be warbound until equipped to keep gearing, uh, sorry, to keep gear consistently using the new bind type. Upon further consideration, we'd like to continue to support the play style of setting up heirlooms with enchants and gems, then passing them to alts as needed. Given the 11.0 patch uh, is, is live today, this is this is obviously from last week, we can't easily fix this in the current patch, but we will be changing it back in an upcoming patch for 11.0.2. So they actually gave us the patch it's changing back in, which I love because it gives you an idea timeline-wise. While unfortunately your gear will be, uh, become bound if you enchant and, uh, and equip until the next patch, once it comes out, your heirloom gear will revert to warbound, allowing you to pass it between alts and equipping it. Uh, we apologize for any temporary inconvenience this may do. So this is great. This is basically saying, hey, you know what? Your heirloom stuff is only for you anyways, and it's made for leveling characters, and it's not made to be crazy powerful. What's the problem? We agree. What is the problem in you being able to gem and enchant the stuff on one character and then throw it inside your, your war bank and pass it to another character? That shouldn't be an issue. And so they're reverting the change that they initially did with heirlooms, and we're going to have a much more free system for heirlooms. Going forward with 11.0.2, which uh, should be pretty soon. I, I'm, yeah, I, I'm looking, I we're at 11.0.0.5 at the moment. So, you know, I'm thinking we'll see what tomorrow looks like and then probably one patch yeah. when the actual game releases, right? <laughs> yeah, probably probably at expansion launch or shortly thereafter. At dot yep. two is probably going to be like bug fixes and data and localization changes and cleaning stuff up, not really content. Um, yeah. But yeah, like this is the way, this is sort of... Um, 
I guess like an unintended consequence of wh- what they were doing with warband itemization and everything. Because like once upon a time, you know, we had heirlooms without a collection manager. So you would you would buy the item from the vendor and then you had to mail it to the tune that you wanted to use it. And then you had to remember which tune had it because you couldn't just make another one. Mm-hmm. I actually lost some heirlooms once upon a time because I forgot where they ended up. And oh, I don't know whatever no. happened to them and I had to rebuy them. Oh, um, no. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Um, Because, you know, we had the collection manager by the end of Cataclysm, and it's like, whatever, log in a character, pop out all your heirlooms into your bags, and off you go. But this, I mean, this play style of gemming and enchanting heirlooms and passing them between tunes, you know, you used to have to do it in the mail, and it was valid. We've we've been doing that for, I mean, when the heirlooms come out, 09, we've been doing it for like 15 years. Yeah. So because of the changes to the bank and everything, you know, it just, this sort of, got lost in the shuffle a little bit. So just be aware if at the moment it's not a factor because you can't put them in the bank anyway. Right. But I guess you can't even mail them at the moment because they're not, they're not war bound. Um, They're, they're bind on equip essentially. So uh, I I think the mitigating factor here is that if you're getting gems and a chance for this gear, it's probably not that expensive anyway. Uh, but it's just the uh, the annoyance of having to do it, you know, three or four times per armor class if that's what you want to do. Uh, yeah, yeah, but then again, I would also sort of recommend that unless you're really desperately trying to preserve your rested XP, that you don't even bother with your looms right now. <laughs> like, there, no matter what kind of gems and enchants you put on them, I mean, is that going to make up for 35 item levels per slot? I don't know. I, I feel yeah. like not, but there might be some broken interaction that I don't know about. I'm not like in the weeds with the alt heirloom power leveling so maybe there's some enchant that's just off the charts good and that's what you want to do but man if you don't have heirlooms or your your heirlooms aren't up to date or they're not set up it's hard to justify like the gold that it costs to upgrade the items right like it's it's not cheap to get them up to you know the current max level that they go to yeah so it's not at all yeah 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 with the with the changes to quest gear like your best bet with with heirlooms, maybe they just forget about them. But I'm glad that they're preserving that gameplay of like, I have this helmet, I put this gem in it, and now it's, well, I guess it doesn't go in the heirloom helm, but you know what I mean. Yeah. You have an item and you enchant it, now my other character gets to benefit from it. And it's very thematic with the whole uh, warband era that we're moving into. Exactly. So I'm yeah. glad they're preserving it, even if maybe it's not like mission critical for you to do in your, you know, regular WoW gameplay. Yeah. Now, we got a blog post that just sort of, again, recaps what's going on with Season 1 and the raid schedule. Uh, I wanted to cover this real quick as we went through it, just to remind everyone about timelines for things. So tomorrow, the pre-expansion event goes live that we've been talking about here, the Radiant Echoes event for gearing characters up and getting them ready and leveling characters and all that fun stuff. Limited time rewards that you can get only during this event, so be sure you're taking advantage of it while you can. On the 20th of August, we end up with the uh, PVP preseason beginning with weekly resets for folks to sort of hop in and check that out. The 22nd is when early access happens for those who bought the deluxe version of the game. They can hop in and do that as well as normal dungeons open for folks who have access. The 26th is when the game actually goes live globally at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific time with heroic dungeons and Dragonflight season four PVE rewards being retired. So if you're someone who actually wants to get those things done as far as your portals and whatnot go, do it before the 26th. That's when that stuff goes away. On September 10th, the War Within Season 1 begins with normal and heroic uh, raid difficulties kicking off, Raid Finder Wing 1, Mythic Zero Dungeons, Heroic Seasonal Dungeons, and a new world boss, as well as PvP Season 1 begins. So everything kicks off on the 10th, except for Mythic Raid and Mythic Plus. Uh, The 17th of September is when we see Mythic Raids and Mythic Plus open, as well as Raid Finder Wing 2, and the Raid Story Mode opens for folks who want to get in and just experience the actual story of the raid. On the 24th of September, Raid Finder Wing 3 opens, and that will be all of the raid accessible through Raid Finder, so you'll be able to check that out uh, towards the end of September when that kicks off. The war within. So a a, a couple things. I just I want to point out a couple things here. Just expand on them a bit. you know, I, I've seen some grousing about Mythic Plus not opening uh, until Mythic Raid Week. Yep. Keep in mind, Mythic Zeros are Mythic Tens. Yep. So it's sort of that step up week. It's it's like an old school heroic week where you have normal and heroic raid and you have Mythic Zeros, Mythic Tens, whatever you, you want to think about them as. And also those Mythic Zeros are on daily lockouts. 
uh, not weekly lockouts. So it's essentially like doing Mythic 10s, you know, in terms of your your gear ramp. Um, it's a little weird, but this is just a shift that they've made. You know, heroic dungeons are are more rewarding and lucrative now than they were like when Dragonflight came out, for example. Yep. And the whole mythic difficulty structure is a bit different. So mythic zeros are still going to be lucrative and a good gearing ramp into, you know, uh, not only the mythic raids that open the next week and keystone dungeons, but also the normal and heroic raids that are open that week as well. One thing I love that they did is that story mode raid opens the week before the final raid finder wing opens. Story mode is just the final boss. And you can do it uh, solo or with a group of up to five pre-made. And I think this is perfect because it lets players who want that experience to have it in a way that they can control, right? Yeah. They're not they're not queuing into a raid finder thing and then experiencing it in that kind of chaotic raid finder environment if they don't want to. They can just focus on like that fight, what it looks like, and just absorb it uh, at their own pace. And, you know, it's not like the if you're in a situation where you're not going to be doing organized raiding or whatever, that your first opportunity to see the end of this fight against the final boss of the first tier is only in raid finder. Like, I think it's really smart to do it that way. So I'm, I'm glad that they did that. I, I think it's way more flexible and it's cool. Like I, I might, I mean, depending on how hard normal is tuned, I might be doing that on the 17th when, when resets come up, let me check out story mode on the last boss, you know, yeah, I'm sure be. there's a quest associated with defeating the final boss yep. and whatever. Um, you know, if we don't get all the way through normal the first week, which often happens, especially at the outset of a new expansion, when stuff, when tuning is all over the place and whatever, I think it's a, it's a great option for so many players to just say like, here, do it at your own pace, do it by yourself, do it with a small group of friends, whatever, and then open up the raid finder population the following week. I think it's really smart. Yeah. As far as dungeons go, people can experience four leveling dungeons as well as four max level dungeons. So there is a good chunk of content too to experience in a pair of time. And when you're talking about Mythic Zeros, that's a lot of dungeons that you can actually get into and, and run content at to get some nice rewards for those Mythic Zeros once September 10th drops and all of that opens up for folks to dive into. Okay. Yeah, man. Uh, I just want one thing about yeah, the sure. dungeon pool. Good yeah. luck keeping the name The Stone Vault clear in your head. That's a really unique dungeon name. We're mm -hmm. never going to confuse that with anything else ever. Yeah. So, yeah. Look at any other vaults in the game or like the Stone Core or anything. Even, even, like even Rookery to me, there's a few Rookeries. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, there's a few, yeah, there's a few things there. I mean, look, um, the game's been around a long time, okay? There's yeah. going to be associations with all kinds of different stuff. But man, the Stone Vault is the one that, like, when I hear. When I like read it somewhere, I hear somebody talking about it as a dungeon. I'm like, wait, isn't that the one from Cataclysm? But stone no, that, was, yeah, that no. was the stone core. This yeah. is the stone vault. Exactly. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, last blog post we want to cover here is about uh, Mythic Plus affixes. Because, hey, they just keep changing stuff, man. It just it keeps going round and round. Um, there's a new affix. They're continuing along the theme of Zalatath's Bargain, where players can harness powerful boons granted to uh, dungeon enemies by the Harbinger. Uh, we're adding a new affix for their beta testing this week. This was this past week that this came in. This is Zalatas Bargain Oblivion, which make, I cannot say without thinking about, oh my God. Bosses Elder Scrolls? The, well, there's there's a, no, there's a, a boss from World of Warcraft ages ago that would yell Oblivion. All right. While in combat, Zalatas manifests crystals from the void that can be absorbed by enemy players, but sorry, by enemies or players. Uh, these crystals spawn near enemies and move towards them until they are absorbed by the player or collide with the target enemy. Players who absorb these void crystals gain increased mastery and leech. This is incredible. I love this affix. This is a great idea. This forces players yeah. to pay attention to movement. This forces players to move enemies a certain amount if they you know, want to try and avoid something like that happening. But more importantly, it gives DPS something to do. It becomes the DPS's job because you want mastery and you want leech to run around, try and grab these. It'd be great if a healer happened to get them. It'd be okay if a tank did, although it means it's getting pretty close to the stuff that you don't want to get it. So keep that in mind, because it does also have a punishment if it happens to make it to enemies. So uh, I, I dig this idea. Um, there's also some adjustments coming in for these, which is that Voidbound is receiving adjustments to ease positioning requirements and increase the value of defeating it to offset its damage requirements. So the Zaltas Bargain Voidbound, the Voidbound Emissary now follows the tank player after being summoned. Its Emissary's health has been adjusted to no longer scale with Fortify, which thank 
God, because I hate it when those things sync up. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, Dark Prayer now grants 5% damage to all enemies in combat every two seconds, adjusted down from 10% to all enemies every three seconds. And Dark Prayer now persists on enemy creatures in the channel, uh, sorry, in the if the channel finishes without the Void Emissary being defeated, as well as the Blessing from Beyond now grants 20% cooldown reduction in addition to 20% critical strike, which is way cooler too. I love being able to use my abilities more often. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. So yes, I, I love the changes that they've come in with for both of uh, these bargains for folks. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how this plays out as far as, you know, the, the, the dun dungeon affixes go. Because I think they got them out in front of players early enough that they got enough feedback from players about them that they were able to really tweak and turn like this is mm -hmm. like the fourth iteration this is like the sixth affix that we've seen them come up with where they're cycling stuff out and cycling stuff in to be able to go yeah i think this is going to be really good and i love seeing these tweaks like even just going hey yeah. you know what on top of 20 percent crit which is nice let's give them 20 percent cooldown reduction because now all of a sudden it's like oh man that really big cooldown that i right. have suddenly comes back up that much faster right and let's keep this rolling you feel that so much too oh, yeah. in gameplay like you feel that way more than i mean like i guess crit, if you yeah. have a, a real um like a proccy spec where you need to crit a lot then you feel that but like right man 20 percent cdr is so fun yeah i think it was last week or two weeks ago i was like i am losing the thread i don't understand what they're doing here i don't i don't see how this is better than what we had yeah this blog i'm starting to to see it okay there's faith the, the, here man there's faith yeah, yeah yeah the new affix sounds really good it sounds like yeah. it sounds like what like what if volcanic rewarded you if you did it right yeah <laughs> sort of right like yeah. you have to move you have to reposition and then you get a cool buff for doing that yeah you know? or, or um, snapping the vine uh when you got mm -hmm. rooted actually gave you a, a big speed boost or something at the end yeah, of it, so whatever right. it was right yeah yeah, it's similar to something like that for sure like it, like react to this appropriately and then receive a benefit um yeah. Mastery and Leech is a, is a cool bonus, you know, um, and yeah, I, I, you know, I haven't seen this yet. Like I said, I've, I, I've done, I have played less War Within Alpha Beta than, man, I think you'd have to go back to like Legion or something, which I just got access to late. That was like before we had a relationship with the company and would get invited to test stuff. I just haven't had time this summer. So I don't, I don't know what this looks like, but as long as this reads okay, I think this is a nice addition to the roster. I think this is it's going to feel good to get that to get that big, you know, mastery and leech buff coming in the, to finish off that pack. The void bound adjustments sound great because these are the kinds of things that I feel like in the past would go live like the fortified scaling. Right. It, that's something that like we would suffer with for a month or more and then they would finally, you know, change it. I, I love the fact that they got out in front of that one. I think having the void emissary follow the tank is very much appreciated. Like, please, yes. Everything in the dungeon should be following the tank. The other yeah. players, the mobs, everything. Yes, make it follow the tank. That's a great change. The the health scaling, incredible. You don't want the you don't want the affix to take over the whole tenor of the dungeon. You know what I mean? And then you start going up the ladder there and you're playing with fortified, and the thing's health just gets out of control as you try to do higher keys. And then the entire, you know, trash pull becomes about killing this void emissary. Like, that's not that's supposed to add flavor to the dungeon. It's not supposed to be the whole meal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and yeah, so dark prayer is going to scale faster. It's get, it's going to scale faster, but start lower. So that's, you know, that probably gives you a little bit more of a chance to catch up and, and get it taken care of. The thing about it persisting on enemy creatures, if it finishes without the void, emissary being defeated is it's like an anti cheese, right? It's like, Oh, we don't need to kill this thing because it has too much health. So we'll just kill the mobs instead, but then they're going to be super buffed. So you definitely, I think that keeps it in line where like, yes, you want to kill this thing. And yeah, I mean, dude, anytime you add critical uh, cooldown reduction, to anything, yeah. uh, you're going to make me happy. Yeah. Uh, like, especially in dungeons and just like firing off more avatars. Like it's so fun. Yeah, so it's so fun. Um, yeah. They're starting to win me over with these at first. I, at first I was like, okay, this sounds cool. I'm ready to go on this, on this journey. And then, it felt like it was all over the place. And I was like, I'm just not, I'm not seeing the big picture here. This seems like it's more trouble than it's worth. This, these changes sound really good to me. i still have concerns. You know, it's, it's ultimately going to be a tuning question. And how does having Fort and Tyrannical every week feel mm -hmm. when you're trying to get those teleports? But I mean, I think they're moving in a good direction. 
I I have faith that the team will get the tuning dialed in sooner than later, but they're going to need a lot of data anyway. So I don't know. I, I I'm expecting stuff to be a bit rocky out of the gate. To be honest, I'm not I'm not on the just delay it bandwagon because I don't think they're going to do that anyway. And uh, some of this stuff just naturally has to come in late in the process. And the tuning is always kind of the last thing that clicks in because they need data about what players are actually experiencing and doing and you yeah. know, what's actually happening in, in a big picture sense yeah. before they can dial these things in. So sometimes we just got to suffer and, you know, expansion launch can be a, a bit of a rocky time. So hopefully it won't be too bad, but I'm ready to just take the ride. You know, if it's, if it's a mess, it's a mess. I know they'll, they'll dial it in, but uh, I think, I think, the the theming is really cool so that's that that's a very important piece of the puzzle it makes you want to keep coming back yeah exactly okay so we did get a write-in letter that i want to fit in here this one comes in from nathan r who says i just listened to episode 641 and i completely agree with the changes i've played wow for 14 years and lately have been a pure have been purely a classic player because i cannot stand the homogenized roles that have been going on but main healers just want to heal. That's what I love about the older game. If retail went back to that, I would come back 100%. I would love it so much. Thanks, guys, and keep up the awesome work. Thanks for the write-in there, Nathan. Yeah, I I, I agree with you. Like I, I feel like we are moving in a good direction with War Within when it comes to sort of breaking back down to that triad, that having that DPS tank and, and healer, that holy trinity that's so important to have. And I would love if they continued to shift even lean even harder into that to go. Yeah, we do not expect healers to be, you know, second rate DPSs. We don't expect tanks to be sometimes better than our DPSs and better than our healers at those roles. That would be great to see them shift away from that and see sort of the focus come back in there. So uh, I'm glad you enjoyed episode 641. I hope you enjoyed this one too. And couldn't agree more. I, uh, I'm looking forward to the changes coming up. Absolutely. Thanks for writing in, Nathan. I mean, yeah, it's a controversial change, right? And um, obviously, anytime it feels like we're getting less power as players, there is going to be a negative reaction to that. Yep. But yeah, I think the texture of combat is really important. I mean, I don't want to rehash the discussion yeah, sure. we had last week, yeah. but you know, it is, I think that's a, a thing that draws a lot of us to the game. I like tanking. I want to play defensively. I want to be rewarded for being good at it. Healers want to have that same kind of role where like they're protecting the party and keeping everybody safe. And, oh, I hit that absorb right at the perfect time for this ability yep. or, you know, I healed up the whole party from this AOE. That feels cool. It so does. rewarding that and, and I think building a texture in the combat is really important for WoW to feel like WoW and not MOP Remix. Yeah, it is important to make it feel like, wow. And I agree that it does, it, it fits that. So thanks again for writing in. If you folks want to write us in a comment or a question, feel free to do so. The starting zone at gmail.com. All right. I'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons because they contribute a ton to our show and help us to improve on the content we create. I'm going to give a special shout out today to Alianas, Arajian, James, Kapawi, Max, Pinky, Shoral, and Rager, as well as our newest patron, Joe Yu. Thank you, Joe for hopping in and supporting the show as well. If you're someone who wants to hop in and support our Patreon, you can do so at patreon.com slash the starting zone. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who has supported the show or who does currently support the show or who wants to in the future hop in and support the show. We appreciate you. You help keep the whole thing running smooth and making sure we get these weekly episodes out to you folks and fill you in on all the fun stuff that's going on. So thank you, patrons. We appreciate you. And uh, look forward to more episodes to come. Absolutely. Thank you, patrons, past and present. We really appreciate all the support. And uh, we couldn't do it without you. We've been doing the show a really long time. And, uh, I mean, the response to the show of late has been incredible. Uh, I, I mean, it, there's a lot of good vibes around the game. It always happens to some degree when it was expansion time. Although, maybe not always. Maybe not in 2020. But, uh, you know, it, that's th that's sort of how it goes. But it's... Uh, it's just awesome to be in the midst of it, you know, to have people checking in and checking back into the game, into the show, whatever. And it's great to hear from everybody. And so uh, we, we appreciate you and patrons. Keep us on track. Keep us on schedule. Keep those episodes on your feet. Yeah. If you're someone who wants to also pass on some good vibes and help the show out, you can leave us a, uh, a five star review over there on your iTunes and Apple podcast. We got one from the longest iTunes name I've ever seen, which is how are all my character names taken? Uh, as, as one one actual name, that is their name in the US. Uh, the, this review is entitled Such Good Content, says, I listen to the starting zone almost every week. 
It always delivers high quality content that helps to inform the player base. While I don't always agree with some of the opinions on the game, they deliver well-reasoned and thoughtful commentary that helps me understand other parts of the player base. Keep up the great work. Yeah, it's really important, I find, for everyone who plays this game, when they're giving comments or feedback about it, your comments or feedback are absolutely valid. But the reason why Blizzard might be making certain decisions might be because they're making the decisions for the broader player base. And remembering that those of us who do high-end content, do not make up the majority of players in the player base, but we are also very vocal, is an important thing to note. So yeah, it, it's a tricky thing to get in there and do, but uh, as far as this content goes, I think Blizzard's moving in a good direction with this next expansion. I look forward to hopefully having more opinions that you know we agree with on when it comes to that sort of thing, because everyone's just happy with the state of the game. That's That's my objective here. Yeah, uh, how are all my character names taken was the reaction that I had when I transferred to Storm Rage last summer. Oh, uh -huh, um, uh -huh. <laughs> so I can, can relate to that. Uh, I would be concerned if you always agreed with some of the opinions that we have on the well, game. We don't even agree. Every, yeah, right. I mean, everybody plays the game differently, right? And so it's not really about like us lo laying out some decree that we think people should follow. It's about having a discussion about the game, what works and doesn't, and what's cool and what's not cool, and that's going to be different for everybody in every play style, but you know, I I think trying to keep that in mind as we move through some of these items or try to figure out why Blizzard's doing a thing that they're doing. Like there are a lot of different perspectives in the game and a lot of different ways to play. So there's there's no wrong way to play, like we always say around here. And but how you play does inform you know what kind of opinions you're going to have or or your outlook overall in the game. So um, that is you know that's we get into that stuff around here for sure. Yeah. But yeah, thanks for writing in, and I mean. I'm glad, you know, glad to hear that we could we could help you kind of navigate the game and and what what's going on and have fun out there with uh, the pre-expansion event kicking off this week. Yeah, it is. It is going to be an exciting week with that thing kicking off. Lots of reasons to get back into the game right now. Start loving up characters, getting yourself all geared, getting that extra reputation, all the fun things that you can hop into, experience some of the Dragonflight content before it goes away crush some of the remix content that just got nerfed into the ground. All that stuff is exciting. Uh, with that, I want to wrap up episode 642 of The Starting Zone. You can check out show notes for this episode or leave us a comment on the show over on thestartingzone.com, the official website for The Starting Zone podcast. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to reach out to us with a question or uh, feedback, whatever it is, you can email us at thestartingzone at gmail.com. We're also on Twitter at The Starting Zone or over on Discord. We have a Discord server. You can uh, join that by going to thestartingzone.com slash Discord. And we have uh, shirts and mugs and stickers and all that kind of fun stuff too over at TeePublic. That's T-E-E-Public.com slash stores slash The Starting Zone. You can check them all out over there. And if you're trying to find Jason, where can folks find you on the internet, Jason? The best place to find me is over on Twitter. You can find me over there at Shieldwald. You can also find me on uh, Blue Sky. It's just Jay Lucas over there. Um, I don't, I haven't been posting over there yet still, but I do check it, uh, you know, frequently. So come say hi over there. Uh, you can find the video channels at twitch.tv slash shieldwald and youtube.com slash shieldwald. They've been dormant still. I, I, I gotta, I really gotta do some work. Uh, probably I, I got a little vacation coming up. I want to get back from that. It's going to be time to prep for expansion launch and all that. Cause I want to be able to stream and hang out and whatever's going on when we're within's brand new. So uh, yeah, check out the video channels, uh, twitch.tv slash shieldwall is usually where I'll be streaming. And then I try to co-stream to YouTube or something. I haven't had great success with that in the past, but give it a shot. All right. If you're trying to find me, you can find me over on Twitter at Spencer underscore Downey or over on uh, twitch.tv slash Spencer HD or on youtube.com slash at Spencer HD. And with that, for Jason and myself, we want to say thanks for listening and jobs done. <laughs>